know no physics class. Just got over the place at Guy's. To raise the bee, I think. Is that good? If she gets it, yeah, it's brilliant. I'm just cleaning the bathroom. What's happened? Nothing. You all right? Fine. So, how was college today, then? Um, not bad. Got a lot of biology homework to do tonight, though. Where's Rach? Having tea with this new friend she's found. They're going straight on to hers after school. Is that safe? I think so. Susie's mum's collecting them and bringing Rach back home. She's got to make friends, Beth. Yeah, I know, but... It's and so have you. It's the only way any of this will make sense. I think Rachel can come out of it untouched. Untouched? No, I didn't mean... Sometimes, Mother, you have a truly wonderful way with words. I didn't mean... I know. I know what you meant. Beth. What happened with you and your dad? I don't know, Mum, OK? You've never really talked. Well, what do you want me to do? Sit down with a cup of tea and have a nice, cosy chat about it together? <laughs> Let's get it off our chests. <laughs> well, that'll do us a lot of good, won't it? Let's talk about how my dad slid into my bed and lifted up my nightie. And how was it for you, Beth? Well, it was hell for me, Mum, thanks very much. Beth, that's why I went to the police and had him put away, but I couldn't tell them what he'd done to you. I wanted to protect you. Where did this come from? It's from him, isn't it? He's been here again. It was delivered this morning. It's just a flower, Beth, one flower. No, it's not just a flower. You let it into this house. You let it sit in our sink, drinking our water. You let this one in, and then the next, and then the next. And the next, you're letting him back in. Yes, you are, Mum. Bit by bit, flower by flower, you're letting him back in. There's something else. This came this morning. Look at the address. Read it. Had anything with VAT on, you passed up on. So I want to know if it's got VAT on. Well, they've got red stickers on. Oh, that's clever. Right, so let's get you tested. And don't worry, all right? You're doing brilliantly for your first day. Right, uh, repeat item button. Um, that one? Great. I tell you what, nobody else has ever picked it up that quick. VAT? That one? Tell you what, that's a lovely perfume you're wearing. Everybody says that. Right, uh, better get back to work, eh? Right, so I'll um, finish pricing up the tins in the back then. Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. How's it going? Pardon? So far with Bev? Oh, fine, yeah. Where is she? She's out in the back pricing tins. Well, keep an eye on her. Yeah, I will. Lynn thinks she's trouble. Yeah, no, that's just sisters for you, that, isn't it, eh? I reckon there's a bit of jealousy there. I'll tell you what, Dee, she's a nice girl. Very quick, very willing. Well, don't take any cheek. I can handle Beverly. Missing you all so much. I think about you all the time. There's so much I want to make up to you, and I will if only you'll let me. Well, he always was good with words, wasn't he, our dad? Could sweet talk his way into anything. Oh, come on, Beth. I'm cold. Let Daddy under the covers. Will me obey? I'll tell you something. You let him back into your life, and that's the last you'll ever see of me. But if we fight him too hard, if we don't meet him halfway, he snatches Rachel from school to punish me. He could do anything. You see? You don't think he's changed at all, do you? 
You're just weakening because you're scared of him. He's so generous with the word love, isn't he, my dad? I love you. I love you all. The love I feel. My darling love. Six times on one page. And it means nothing. Don't listen to his easy words. Don't you remember what it's like to be loved by Dad? Look at the scars if you've forgotten. Remember how he loved me? I wrote her. No, I'm not a rotor, for God's sake. Oh, come on, Mike. The place is a tip. Yeah, okay. We'll clean up a bit. Well, why? Why should we? Well, I wouldn't mind digging through to a few surfaces myself. I like to know there's still a floor under my feet. Yeah, okay. I'll have floor, fair enough. But I don't see why we should clean up anywhere else. Because you live here, that's why. Well, we pay rent, don't we? Rent should include cleaning. It's your house. It's your filth. Also, we need a kitty for milk and coffee and stuff. Otherwise, we're going to end up with our own private bottles of milk and personal like me. OK, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. We'll clean our room and we'll throw in a fiver a week each. So I'm not having any stupid rotors. Tenner a week. A tenner? Each? A tenner a week? That's 40 quid a week between us. 30. What's with degree and he can't even do his four times tables? Four times ten is 40. It's 30, actually. Three times ten. Anna doesn't pay. She's got no money, she's just lost her job. I'm sorry about that, but I've got no money either. Well, Anna's not paying any rent, then. That's not fair. I'm paying rent and I'm dossing on the floor. In that case, I should have air room. From each according to his ability to each according to his need. Oh, don't start quoting Marx. Wearing the suit, nice middle-class job. He comes home and squeezes every penny out of his poverty-stricken tenants. Some bloody socialist, that. And what are you, the resident militant? He's not a socialist at all. No, I'm not. I don't see the relevance of it. Not these days. The relevance is there's one person here without any money and three people with money. Therefore, the people with money are going to pay for the one who hasn't got any. So why does she get a room all to herself, then? I need a bed more than she does. Excuse me. I'll just go on this long. to you the other night. When? When he jumped in a taxi and disappeared. Never even left the shoe behind. Sorry? Joke. Oh. Well, it wasn't really. It was crap, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you fancy doing it again? Going out one night? Well, my mum gets nervous on her own and um, I don't like to stay out late. Well, we could make it dead early. In fact, what are you doing now? We could go and see a film. Now? Yeah, we'll be back before seven. Um, well, I've got a lot of homework to do. Are you saying this because you really don't want to go? Well, that's cool. If you don't want to go, fair enough. It's just, I quite fancy seeing that Orlando. It's had that good review. Well, here's your chance then. An offer you can't refuse. Yes, I can. Oh, go on. We'll be back before seven, I promise. All right, just my arm. Oh, Sam? Beth! Oh, hello, Mike. Hiya. Beth, Mrs. Shackleton's here. I'll meet you outside yours in half an hour. All right, then. Okay. See you then. Was that Beth Jordan she was talking to? Yeah, pictures. I'm meeting her in half an hour. Ah, oh, crack today. Yeah, you should have heard me. What an operator, eh? I'm not in Colette's, have you? Or polos or anything? Do you fancy making a foursome? But I could ask Margaret. Oh, come on, look, I've told you. That I'd love her to be something more with me and Margaret, but she's engaged, for God's sake. We're just fates. So you're enjoying college, Beth? Yeah, it's, it's fine. Making lots of friends? One or two, aren't you, love? And Mr. Jordash hasn't been in contact? No. Good. Well, if anything suspicious happens, a phone call that goes dead, anything at all that worries you, get in touch immediately. Yes, of course. Have you thought any more about a divorce? No. Think about it. And contact us if there are any problems. Goodbye, Beth. Bye. 
Uh, Mrs Shackleton, I just wanted to say, my... Um, college is really good. It's really great. Good. I'll see you both in a couple of weeks. Why did you lie? Because if she knows your dad's found us, they'll move us from here. They'll stick us in some refuge again. Three of us in one room in a town we don't know. Do you want all that again? Starting from scratch, new schools, new neighbours, and all the time just waiting for the day when your dad finds us again? Because he will, you know. We can't go on running, Beth. We have to stop sometime. <laughs> Wash him around the back. What's on it? Uh, and that's ten, okay? Thanks a lot. Bye now. Hello, Keith. Hi, right, Miss Dixon. Uh, is Margaret upstairs? No, she's taking a load of files around to the farm and she won't be a minute. All right, well, I'll see you back later. Twenty minutes. All right, I'll see you later. So you've done your own washing? I can use a washing machine, you know, Mum. That's my boy. <laughs> so, what do you want Margaret for? Well, I'm just thinking of going to pictures. You know, a few of us thought Margaret might like to come. Oh, hello, love. Get some clever words with you. Yeah? You're a bit sad, aren't you, Mum? I thought you were going to the pictures. I am just waiting for Keith. Just brighten your life up a little while I wait. Thanks, pet. Mrs. Dixon, a rose was delivered for me this morning, a single red rose. Yeah, from your husband. Did he phone in the order? No, he ordered them himself. When? I think it was last Friday, sometime last week. I'll check the order for you. He was very nice. Talked about you all the time. What did he say? Well, just, uh, well, how much you wanted to get back with the family, how much you like flowers, and oh, look, here we are. Single red rose every Monday. Every Monday? Dead romantic, isn't it? I'm sure my Ron doesn't even know what a rose is. I don't want them. But he ordered them a month in advance. Well, tear the order up. I don't want them. I can't really cancel a customer's order. What do you want me to do with them? Whatever you want. I don't care. Just don't deliver them to me, all right? Nice man, I can't believe. Has Beth ever said anything to you about her father? I thought she was dead. Dead? Well, very much alive. God, I'd die for a man like that to send me a red rose every week. All right. I'll tell me that then, shall I? Don't bother. It wouldn't be the same. Mark? Oh, hiya. Hiya. Listen. See the pictures. Um, when? Well, sort of now, really. Like in about 20 minutes. Look, I know it's dead short notice and everything, but you know what Mike's like. Dead impulsive. Beth Joe, that's just going. I can't. I'm just on my way to the office. Patricia's got a rush job on. Oh, well. Oh, look, I'm sorry. It was a stupid idea. <laughs> it wasn't. It's was not a really good one at the moment. Oh, well, not so worry. Well, I'll. Will I see you around? I expect so, yeah. I'm sorry I'm causing too much trouble. I'll get back to my room. No way. You have to sleep on the sofa. It's my house. I say who lives here. But if Mike, if wants... Mike wants to stay, then he can carry on dossing on Keith's floor. I tried another agency today. Oh, the same story. They all seem to be clamping down. I'm going to have to forget about Nanny. I need to find a job where they won't ask for a P45 or a national insurance card. Got some toast? Have you had lunch? You've got to eat, Anna. I've got seven pounds and 32 pence. That's all I've got left to last me until I find some work. For God's sake. I can't live off charity, Peter. It's not charity, it's toast. Yeah, something wild. That was Jonathan Demi as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Who's the guy in that? Well, it was Melanie Griffiths, and uh, wasn't it one of the Sheen Gang? No, I don't 
tell you what, that Charlie Sheen's the spitting image of his dad, isn't it? It must be weird looking in the mirror and seeing your aunt fella staring back at you. I'll tell you what, my mum's impressed with your dad, you know. She says he's dead romantic. You talk too much. Well, we are on it. Three tins of baked beans, please. Hello, Bev. Nice to see you, Bev. My goodness, you're looking well. What are you playing at this time, Bev? Me? Well, I'm not playing at anything. Well, I can't stop you working here, but I'm warning you, Ron Dixon is a lovely man. He's a good friend of ours, and so is his wife. So just don't start any of your tricks on him, all right? What tricks? <sighs> Look, this is part of my life now, this place. These are my friends. I don't need you muscling in here and screwing it all up for me again. You haven't got exclusive rights on the whole neighbourhood, you know. Do you know, I can't think why you've let yourself get so bitter. <gasps> it's making you look very pinched around the mouth. Listen, lady, everything of mine you ever wanted, you just steamed on in and took. Clothes, shoes, friends, fellas, husbands. No, love, you've got that the wrong way round. Everything I ever wanted, you already had. And when I wanted to go to Switzerland with the school, when I wanted a new bike, when I wanted the kind of gear everyone else was wearing. Oh, no. We can't afford that, because Lynn's got to have her dancing classes. Lynn has got to have her new ballet shoes. Lynn has got to have every bloody thing she wants, so you'll just have to make do with second best, won't you, Bev? Oh, God, bring on the violin. I just wanted to, someone to notice I was there, all right? How could anybody ignore you? From the moment you were born, you had me mum spinning round in circles. I was the one nobody noticed. I was just left to get on with it myself. Well, I'm getting on with it nicely at the moment, thanks very much, and I want to keep it that way. So lay off my friends and lay off Frank, OK? Oh, feeling a bit insecure, are we? Age, love. You should try roll jelly. He's worth a second look, though, isn't he? You're Frank. Listen, Bev, I was stupid enough to let you walk away with Steve, but I'm warning you, it's not going to happen again. You're not taking Frank off me. I wouldn't dream of it. Anyway, I'd be wasting my time, wouldn't I? He's crazy about you. Can't keep his eyes off you. <sighs> OK, for Frank's sake, I'm prepared to overlook the past. But I won't forget it, Bev, ever. You put one foot wrong. Never mind foot. One toenail. Hiya, little love. So that's three tins of baked beans at 27 pence each. Press the repeat item button. Done it. Have you watched? quick, your sister, you know. I know. That's 81 pence, please, love. with Mike and Keith? No. Are you all right? Not really, no. I'm trying to write a reply to Derek. I don't really know what to put. I mean, if he wants me to break it off, why can't he just say so, eh? Instead of all this, I want you to feel free business. Why can't he just say? Uh, do you want to come in for a coffee or something? No, thanks. I don't mind leaving my mum alone for longer. No, I was just thinking then. Well, I better go back in then. Thank you, girl. It's great. Well, maybe we could, I mean, well, there's a good film club down the union. There's loads of bands and stuff on. Last week it's him. Do you mind if I kiss you? No. I mean, yeah, I don't mind. So, um, is it cook up to a club or something, maybe? Look. Mike, I'm not being funny, but I really can't stay out late.
You know, you were talking about my dad before. I suppose everyone's talking about him, aren't they? And us. No. There they are. If I tell you something, will you promise not to tell anyone? Not anyone ever. The reason... The reason I don't like leaving my mum alone and the reason I can't talk about my dad is... is because he's been in prison. He got two years for assault. We can't mum. Last time we broke a jaw, we looked at his spleen. He was unconscious for two days. God. Well, you won't tell anyone, will you? No, no. I just thought I should explain why, why I don't go out. I did have a really good night tonight. Thanks. Bye. See you again. Yeah. What does he want? I mean, does he want me to follow him round for the rest of our lives, looking after refugees and things? I can't do that. I keep thinking, if I really loved him enough, then I could, I could give up anything for him. But then I think, no, why should I? Why can't he give up everything for me? He did love. He left the priesthood for you. No, no, he didn't. Not in here, he didn't. In here, he's still a priest. Honestly, Dee Dee, you should see him out there. Handing himself round in little chunks to everybody who asks for a bit. There's nothing left for me. So, you see, what it boils down to is neither of us loves each other enough. Margaret, just don't write anything you regret. No. I've wasted enough time already. I'm not sitting round here any longer. I'm sick of my life being on hold. Now, hang on a minute, Margaret. Think about it. Sleep on it. I have thought. It's no use lying to each other. I mean, if he wants me to feel free, well, that's just great. I want him to feel free as well. Oh, love. It's OK. I'm fine. I'm OK. Relief to know where I am at last. <laughs> what am I going to do now, Dee Dee? too well last night. Do you want me to stay at home? No, love, I'm fine. You've missed enough college. I know, but I hate leaving you.
Um, I'm, uh... oh, Smells like a brothel in here. Does it? Oh, I'm, uh... Just trying to have this new aftershave, aren't I? <laughs> you don't wear aftershave. Oh, well, I do when I'm going out, don't I? Oh, so where are you going, then? Uh, or in particular, I'm just... You're full of questions this morning, aren't you? What are you doing all this in the mall before, then? Because I forgot to take the bottle in with me last night. Is that all right with you? Well, doesn't that hurt? Haven't you got somewhere to go? Now, nah, last week at term, it's all dead down there. So, eh, uh, has my mum banned you from the bathroom or something? If that, when did you start growing hairs in your nose? Michael! Oh, that is OK. So, has my mum in our? Yeah. And she's a bit prickly this morning, so watch your step. Hi, what's up? Oh, it's all this. Dad, can mark the business again, isn't it, eh? Oh, what's happened now? Well, Margaret has only gone and broke off the engagement, taking the ring off and everything. Are oh, you joking? Yeah, so your mum's a bit upset. What, Margaret's broke off the engagement? Yeah. What a waste, eh? You have to go through all that months of trouble and worry and people yelling at one another. Just go and break the whole thing off. I'll tell you what, Dad. I reckon you're seriously trying to impress me mum. Or you got a bit on the side. Don't be daft. <laughs> what, my age? Oh, never mind, eh, Dad? Yeah, I'll show you how it's done. Watch this. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Listen, we didn't make any proper plans yesterday. I was thinking, Friday night, big night down the Union, there's about four or five bands on. Should be good. I can't. Oh, well, what about Saturday, then? Pictures, nearly show? No, I'm sorry, I can't. But I thought... I don't want to get involved, do I? I'm not asking you to get involved. I'm just asking you to come and listen to a couple of bands with me. Well, it was great yesterday. It was for me, anyway. Well, it was for me, too. Not every fella's gonna turn out to be like your dad, you know. All right, mate. How's things? Don't ask me. I'm only depressed here. You haven't got a spare four thousand pound on you, have you? Oh, not at this precise moment, no. It's stupid, isn't it? Four thousand pound, and if I don't find it, the builders decide to repossess. A bad, eh? No, oh, that's what I want the mortgage. But never mind, eh? You see, I've got this whole new philosophy. What's the best thing to do with problems, Sam? Solve them. I'm failing that. You run away from me. <laughs> and that's just what I'm going to do. I'm off down the smoke for a week. Me, the kids, Marianne. Gonna see a parents. Oh, for <laughs> Hey, listen, mate, uh, you couldn't look after the bungalow for us, could you, Alan Wood? Yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, nice one. It does good to get away from here, spend some time together, you know. Mm. Hey, listen, mate, uh, I never did thank you, did I? What for? Well, I mean, if it wasn't for you, Marianne would be married to Ellis, and I'd be spending my whole life under with my sister in law. Yeah. Listen, Sam, uh, I do know what it costs you, know, you losing Marcy. I'm getting over it. I thought I hadn't seen you around here before. I only started the job yesterday. Hi, it says. All right, Ron. You all right, love? Oh, fine. Manage OK by yourself, did you? You've only been gone ten minutes. Yeah, well, go on, carry on. Don't let me stop you. Right. Staff training, as you know. Takes a lot of skill getting used to this thing. Oh, was that you, Ron? I is what me? Oh, you smell gorgeous. Dead expensive. What is it? Yeah, well, come on, Beverly. <laughs> Don't keep the customer waiting. Finish tilling up. I knew 
knew you'd come. I knew you wouldn't give up on me. Hey, Sin. Here is have Sin there. The keys. I will be off late Friday afternoon, so if you want to pop around then, I'll give me Lenny. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, mate. Cheers, mate. See ya. See ya. Hey. Where's he going to, then? The pizza parlour. No, you divvy. I mean, where's he going late Friday afternoon? He's going to London with Marianne, and he's asked me to keep an eye on the place. Marianne? Yeah. Mick and Marianne? Yes. And how long's this been going on for? It's been ages. Well, sort of. Well, that's great, isn't it? Make our way. No, Jimmy, we can't. Yes, we can. How long's it going for? It's going for a week. Well, that's perfect, isn't it? Bloody brilliant. Listen, we'll go in dead early, right? Early morning. I'll get a bag for one morning next week. Jimmy, we can't. It's burglary. No, it's not. Yeah, all right. Technically, it is. But it's only insurance money, isn't it? Oh. Eh? Look, he's paid enough over the years. Time they paid him for a change. Look, what was it that screwed Mick up in the first place? Hmm? Eh? The system, right? So all we're going to do is screw the system back and serves it bloody right and all. Do us all a favour. Hey, eh? You're not going to chicken out on me, are you, Sam? Sorry about that. You have to fill the kettle from the bathtub. Uh, sit down. I, I can offer you a bed or a chair. I'm not stopping. Just five minutes while you have your tea. I've got to go. Oh, no, please. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, please. Oh, don't look like that. Oh, no, please, I'm sorry. No, I'm very sorry. Oh, sweet heart. What have I done to you? Oh, I'm sorry. I know you'll never forgive me. I don't expect you to. But I want to change. You don't know how much I want to change. I want us to go back to the way that it was at the beginning. that it all went wrong. But things are different now. Help me, Mandy. Please, help me change. That's 9 pound 54, please, love. Forty-six change. There you go. Draw love. Hey, it's good fun, this. Yeah. Look, Bev, um, don't think I'm trying to be funny or anything, love, but, well, well, I think it'd be better if you didn't say things like that in front of customers. Say things like what, Mum? You know what I mean? You, you know, you're drawing attention to it. You mean that gorgeous aftershave? Yeah, well... Done in front of the customers, all right. But you said you like my perfume. Yeah, I do, but. So why can't I return the compliment? So is it okay to say I think you smell gorgeous when we're alone together? Because I do. It wasn't all that bad, though, was it? Yeah, well, okay, I know the last few years were rough, I know that. But I was sick, Mandy. That's the truth of it. I was sick. And even if you rough years can't wipe out all the good times, eh? Remember that hotel we stayed at? The honeymoon suite. And the leg on the bed collapsed and we were too embarrassed to tell anyone. <laughs> I love it when you smile. And the night 
that Beth was born. I couldn't stop crying. I was so happy. God, I loved you. And then when I finally got you the big house in Bexton Avenue, I was so proud. That's all I ever wanted, sweetheart, is to give you the world. And look at me now, huh? Still, I suppose it's better than prison. Marginally. What was it like in prison? Okay. I had to do something, Trev. I had to stop it. Sweetheart, I'm not blaming you. In a strange way, I'm grateful. It gave me plenty of time to think. Not much else to do locked up in a cell all day. All day? It was for my own protection. You're the prisoners. It's okay. You learned to survive, you had to. Listen, love, nothing happened to me in there that I didn't deserve. I can't go backwards, Trevor. I know there were good times. Didn't I make you happy, though? I did, didn't I? But I can't go back to living suffocated with fear all the time. I understand that. I'll do whatever you want. I want to stay where I am. I'm sick of dragging the girls from one town to another. Still, she's doing well, though, Beth, huh? Medicine, huh? You're not listening to me, Trevor. I don't want you coming round to the house. Leave the girls alone. Oh, no, no. You can't stop me seeing the girls. Well, just sometimes, just on special days. No, Trevor. I want you out of our lives. If you love us, leave us alone. No, sweetheart, you're not listening to me. I've changed. It was a sickness. You don't know what it was like. It always started the same way. Things getting on top of me, people getting at me, making me feel inadequate. They'd get on my back at work, they'd push past me in the street, they'd stand in little groups and whisper about me. And I'd take a drink to try and shut them out. What are you on about, Trevor? Nobody was whispering about you. No, well, I know. I know that now. But that's how it felt. That's how the feeling started. And then this anger. I don't know how to describe it. This thick, black anger would start to brew up inside me. And I'd drink more to try and numb it. But the drink made it worse. It just kept on thickening and bubbling until it was in my lungs my chest, behind my eyes. And then suddenly, and I couldn't control it, suddenly everything inside my brain went red. Everything exploded. But you see, it wasn't me, sweetheart. I wasn't in control anymore. It was the anger. And I had to punish you. Well, I had to. It was the only way. I had to hurt you because you were so strong and lovely and the stronger you were, the more inadequate I felt. I shouldn't have come. No, no, no. No, I just wanted to explain that it was an illness. But it's, it's over. I love it like that. You look so young. Don't touch me, Trevor. afraid of that you'll remember how you really feel about me because you still love me don't you if you really wanted me out of your life you would have torn up my letter without even reading the address there you go ta ta yeah. you know I can't believe you've never done this kind of work before you sure you've never done any experience? Not at shop work, no. Well, look, I was thinking, Beverly. Uh... Bev, call me Beverly. I think you're angry with me. I can't imagine anybody ever being angry with you. Mm, they are often. Sometimes I can be quite naughty. <laughs> well, what I was thinking, Bev, 
I was thinking it might be a good idea if you could get to know every aspect of the business. You know, through from ordering down to dealing with suppliers, stock taking, etc., etc. Sounds fascinating. Yeah, so I thought maybe you might like to come and see around the cash and carry. I'd generally go down on Friday night and stock up for the week. On Friday? Yeah, if you've got nothing else on, like. No one's ever asked me out to a cash and carry before. Last jar of instant coffee, Squire. Two pints of milk and three packets of your chocolate digestive biscuits. Oh, I? Hey, didn't I? Yeah. Uh... Oh. So you're working in here now, are you? <laughs> uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh... Bev. Bev McLaughlin. Fancy you remembering. Oh, I'd never forget a name, not me. Not uh, when it comes attached to a face like that. It's Mr. Corkill, isn't it? Uh, Jimmy. Actually, Mr. Corkill, I was quite surprised about what happened over that bar job. Oh, yeah, well, sorry about that, you know, but uh, something came up, some small personal problem, you know. I mean, it should have been yours, love. Should have been yours, but uh, what can you do? Coffee. Thanks, Ron. As a matter of fact, Bev, uh, I'm glad I bumped into you today. <laughs> Must be fate. Because it just so happens, I'm not going to believe this, but it just so happens that one of our girls has had to leave, you know, very suddenly. Milk, chocolate, digestive. Now, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I would have thought that uh, working in somewhere like La Luth would be more in your line rather than, you know, girl with your talents. And milk. Thank you very much. Five pounds forty-eight. So, uh, how's about it? Hey, Jimmy, hope you're not trying to poach my stuff, cos if you are... Hey, yeah, 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 calm down, Ronnie, calm down. I'm just giving the lovely Bev some information. And if she's interested, you know where to find me, don't you, love? Thanks, Mr. Colkill. I really appreciate your offer. But, well, to be honest with you, I'm really enjoying myself working here with Mr. Dixon. You haven't finished your tea. It's gone cold. Let me get you another cup. No. You won't take anything else from me, Mandy. For God's sake, at least let me get you a cup of tea. Trevor, you must leave us alone, for Beth's sake. Well, she's all right, isn't she? No, of course she isn't all right. What do you expect after what happened to her? She's a very damaged girl, Trevor. She's built this bright, tough wall around her, but God knows what's going on inside. She won't talk to me, she won't let anyone in. Let me talk to her, she'll talk to me. Oh, for God's sake, Trevor. You're the last person to help her. Leave her alone. Enough. You've always been jealous of me and Beth. That's a disgusting thing to say. It's always been special with me and her from the day she was born, and you've always resented it. So special you had to climb into her bed? Well, if my own wife wouldn't let me into her... Oh, no! Don't you stop putting the blame on me, Trev. Not for that. Nothing gave you the right to crawl into your own daughter's one bed. One mistake, Mandy. Right. It's... Oh, dear, what a mess. What have you done? I can never manage these carton things. Trevor, it's everywhere. In the cloth. What happened with Beth was part of the sickness. It will never happen again. I swear. Trust me. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Right. And what do you want, Sinbad? Yeah. Uh, oh, you after one of them magazines on the top shelf? Well, don't be soft. What's the matter? Can't you reach? Which ones you want? I'm not reduced to that. Well, not yet, anyway. Have you seen that new girl? One dick who's talking on the shop. Hey, could you shut up about women for five minutes? This is serious. This. I want your advice. Mick's going away. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with it? Well, it gives Jimmy Corkill the opportunity he's been waiting for. I don't have to beg on Mick's bungalow. Oh, good for him. Oh, Terry. What's wrong with you? There's nobody here, is there? I can't go through with it, Ted. I can't. Why not? If Mick's going away, it's going to be a cinch, isn't it? It's the one chance the guy's got of getting straight. How else is he going to get four grand, eh? I mean, do you want to see his kids out on the streets? Or would you like to see them in some bed and breakfast for the homeless, or taken into care? Yeah, but it's criminal, though, Terry, isn't it? It's burglary. Yeah, and the guy's in big trouble, isn't he? Look, what would you want if it was you, eh? Wouldn't you want a couple of good mates like you and Jimmy to come along and get you off the uke? Or would you just want to go under? Well, put like that, I suppose I don't have much choice, do I? Do you have to go? 
Please don't order me any more flowers, all right? I love you, Mandy. Stop it. I just wanted to tell you that before you left and went back to the girls and a warm house. What are you doing? Take it. I can't take this. It's all I've got. Just take it, okay? And that's it, Trev. That's the end. I don't want to see you again. Mandy. This outfit that's looking after you, the Shackletons, did you tell them that I'd been round to your house? Did you tell them, sweetheart? Did you? Just meeting a few mates from the uni. We're meeting up here, and then we're going on to a gig. Do you want to come or what? I don't know. So it's definite about Margaret, is it? She's definitely broke off her engagements. Oh, I see. You fancy steaming in there, do you? Nah, that's the Mike Dixon technique, though. I prefer subtler methods. Oh, yeah? A less muscle-bound, more sensitive sort of approach. Well, I bet you she knocks you back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Well, she's not seriously going to look at me, is she? Somebody who's actually been engaged to a priest. Do you reckon they slept together? Hey, Anna. We're just doing a bit of washing up. Where's Anna? Yep, upstairs in the room. Right. I'd like a tenner from both of you, please. A tenner? When was that decided? I don't remember agreeing to that. I thought we said a fiver each. That's right, a fiver. That's what we agreed. I didn't decide anything. But I never agreed on a fiver. Please, ten rich. The honest Peter, no messing. We can't afford it. Look, it's just till she finds work. Then she can pay her own way. Oh, well, she's not going to find work up in the room, is she? It's not easy for her. Oh, and it's dead easy for us, is it? Oh, yeah, look. Tennis dripping out of our pockets. Peter, you're the one on the executive salary plus perks. You subsidise it if you're so concerned. Look, this is a shared house. I think Mike's quite right. Why should they pay for me? Excuse me. I think you should go and apologise to her. Therefore, for telling the truth. We could probably manage £7.50 each. No, we couldn't. Well, in fact, we probably could, but that's not the point, is it? The point is, why should we? 
If she's got no money, let her go and sign on like everybody else. She can't. She... <sighs> she can't. Anna! Anna! Are you all right? What are you doing? Every time I walk into a room now, people are squabbling about me. It's better if I go. Where? Excuse me, I need to get some things from the wardrobe. Where, Anna? I can't stay where I'm not wanted, Peter. I won't take charity. So where are you going to go? Oh, I don't know. Back to Poland, maybe. I'm sure the Home Office would be delighted to pay my fare. I might ring up and inform on myself. You're not being serious. Of course I'm not being serious. I've lived here for four years. My life is here. What would I do over there? There's nothing left for me in Poland. It's a foreign country to me now. This is my country. Excuse me, I have to pack. Anna, you've got nowhere to go and no money. This is just stupid. You're not thinking straight. Stay here. I want you to stay. Anna, I owe you. You don't owe me anything. Yes, I do. If it wasn't for what you said in court, I'd be in a prison cell right now with seven more years of it to look forward to. As long as I have a roof over my head, you have somewhere to live. Thank you. Don't worry about the money. We'll sort something out. How about... How about if you take on all the cleaning in the house? I'll employ you as a cleaner in exchange for board and lodging. Is that fair? Yeah, I think it's very fair. Well, Mike and Keith think it's fair. Yes. Yes, I think they probably will. You're back early. No lectures Friday after lunch. Just tutor time. What's the matter? Nothing. Has he been round again? He has a name, love. So what do you want me to call him, then? Daddy? Has Daddy been round again? Beth, stop it. Sit down a minute. I'm sorry. I just get scared. I know. Look, Beth, I need to talk to you. Come and sit here. I went to see him. You did what? I had to. Oh, Mum, for God's sake! I had to talk to him, Beth, face to face. I know it's hard for you to understand this, but if I'm going to stop running, then I've got to find a way of facing up to him and to what happened and to how much of it was my fault. Well, anyway, he promised me he'll keep away. But you let him back in every time. No. Not this time, love. Not anymore. So, what do you think? Fine by me. Mike? So Anna will do all the cleaning, the bathroom, everything. Until she gets a job, yeah. All the washing up. Oh, come on, Mike, give her a break. As soon as she finds work, we start a rotor. Well, that's fair enough, isn't it? Is that OK, Mike? Sounds, yeah. Great. Anna? They, uh, said yes. So we'll put 750 a week each into the kitty, then? OK. It's all sorted. I'm sorry to have caused so much trouble. Hey, don't worry about it. It's no problem. Sitting back at a pay with a tenner. I've got no change today. Yeah, you know, I like tea. 
See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, Jean. Bye. I think I might just pop round and see if Peter Harrison's heard anything about the offer we made on the house. Mm, good luck. <laughs> thanks. Bye. I'll get that tenor for you, Sinbad. Bye. Hey, Dee. Hello, Jean. Ron. Uh, listen, I just wanted to say no tea for me tonight, thanks a lot. No tea? No, well, I thought I'd get straight down to cash and carry. I'm, um, taking Beverly with me. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, I thought, just in case there was ever any emergency, she might have to do the stocking up. No, I think that's a sensible idea. Hey, I've had good reports about her from people. Terry, Jimmy, well, everybody. She'll keep them in warm for you tonight. No, you're all right, my love. Don't want to put you to any trouble. It's no trouble. No, well... The thing is, you see, I thought that I'd show Bev where everything was, how you calculate the quantity you're likely to need, things like that. Could take a bit of time. I see. I get it. And anyway, I could do it losing a bit of weight, couldn't I? You don't fool me, Ron Dixon. I know exactly what's going on. Oh, no, dear, it's not what you... What is it with you middle-aged men, eh? You're having a whale of a time, aren't you? Showing off your little empire to your new glamorous assistant. I hope you're paying her overtime for this. What do you mean, overtime? Oh, Ron, don't be so tight. Making her give up a Friday night. Well, if you're not going to pay her, the least you can do is take her for a drink on the way home. Sinbad, I'll get that tenner for you. Cheers. I just thought I'd pop round and see if you'd heard anything from your parents yet about our offer on the house. Yeah, they, uh, they ran back this morning. And? I'm afraid they won't look at anything under 55,000. No, well, we didn't really think it's worth a try, though. 55,000's a bit out of our league. They wouldn't be prepared to negotiate a little. I'm afraid not. <laughs> My goodness, that looks energetic. I think it's defeated me. Look at it. Oh. So, how are things? OK. Look, Jean, are you busy? You couldn't spare five minutes, could you? Come and have a cup of coffee. Oh, I'd love to, but I really... Ha Look, I'll tell you what, why don't I come round later? Oh, hang on, David and I are out tonight. We're going for a bar meal. Oh, well. <laughs> it was supposed to be a celebration, but I don't think it will be now. Why don't you join us? Oh, no, no, thank you, but I couldn't. Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't I pop round about seven, if that's any use? David will be perfectly happy on his own in the pub for an hour. A couple of drinks and a bar, mate, and he'll be fine. I don't want to put you out. Don't be silly. He won't mind. See you about seven. Oh, Mike, um, I wonder, could I have a word with you? Yeah? It's about Beth. I don't want to interfere, Mike, and, and you must do whatever you like. Of course you must. It's just, well, it's not right for a girl of her age to stay at home so much. I want her to get out more. Well, I don't think she's interested, Mrs Yordash. I'll give it another try, eh? Well, I don't know what I did wrong. I mean, we had a really good time at the pictures. Well, I don't think it's got anything to do with you. And I'm not asking you to take her out or anything, it's just that she needs friends. Eh, hey, excuse me, sir. Won't be a minute. Is it all right if I call round later, then? Yes, of course. Cheers. Hiya. Hiya. So, how are you? Um, fine, why? Mike told me about, you know, breaking off the engagement and everything. I am sorry. I don't really want to talk about it. No, no, of course not. Listen, um... I hope you didn't think I was being really clumsy asking you to the pictures the other day. Clumsy? No. Because I was wondering, like, are you doing anything tonight? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, I'm doing something. Oh? I'm babysitting for the Farnhams. Oh, right. Well, look, I'm not being rude, Keith. I've, I've got to get this stuff to the post office, OK? Mick gone, is he? God almighty. Mick, has he gone? He just left. He frightened me to death. Keys. Oh, no, over my dead body. What do you want the keys for? So we can do a quick recce. Don't we be wasting time Monday morning deciding what to take, do we? Monday morning? Yeah. I've got a van fixed. Dead early Monday morning. Beer. 
will be in and out like a knife. Keys. I think you'll find it's open, my oh. love. In you go. Get yourself comfy. Oh, well, it's a bit like this. Yeah. Oh. Can you manage? Yeah, at all. Have you seen Margaret? Er... <laughs> uh, no, love, no. Oh, she must be working around the farms all day. Are you off now? Yeah, yeah, we're just uh, getting off. Have a nice time. Ta-da. something? No. Where? Out the back. Someone out there. No, you stay there. Don't open the door. Who is it? It's Mike Dixon. Hang on, love. What is it you want? Come here, Mike. Thanks. Hiya. Hi. Hi. I didn't scare you, did I? What do you think? Beth! I should have come round the front way. I didn't think. Sorry. Sit down, love. Uh, no, I won't, thanks. I've just come to let you know there's a few of us round at ours. If you fancy coming round. Well, um, I've got a bit of work to do. Ah, well, whatever. But well, we're going to be there till ten, and then we're going on to a gig. I'll go with the front way, shall I? <laughs> I might see you later, then. give up, does he? So, will you go? I might. I don't know. Beth! What? Stop nagging me. I know I've got to make friends. But if you need anything, just knock on the wall. It's a nice lad, Mike Dixon. Oh, yeah. What are you up to? Do I do a spot of matchmaking? No, I just said... Have you spoken to him? Well, I... About me? You've spoken to Mike Dixon about me? And you put him up to this? For God's sake, the last thing I need is someone fixing me up with dates. I think you should stop worrying about me and start worrying about yourself. No, we had the smashing time in Loretta de Mar. When I got bitten by something, a mosquito or something, anyway, it went poisonous. I've still got a scar up there. Maybe we had this smashing room. It was overlooking the pool with the sea in the distance. Dead romantic. They put on this special steak and sangria night, and then another night we had a barbecue on the beach. You ever been to Spain, Mum? Oh. All right, all right. One glass of Chardonnay. Max gets it from his wine club. It's jolly good stuff. Cheers. To you. Um, I'm off now, Mum. OK, love. I won't be late. Hi. Hello, Beth. Um, you know where I am if you need me. Better be off. Bye. Bye, Mr Crosby. Bye. 17 going on 40. She's seen too much. So, has your husband been in touch again? He's here, Jean. He's living up here. In Liverpool? I don't know what to do. Sometimes I think it'd be easier if I just gave in. I'll never get away from him. Never. I'm so tired. Well, I thought Shh, if you... The baby's asleep. I thought if you couldn't get out, maybe I could, you know, bring the film round to you. Oh, don't throw me out. I've got nowhere else to go. The room's stacked up to the ceiling with all Mike's mates from the uni. What's the film? Edward Cezanne's. You haven't seen it, have you? No. You better come in. Oh, <laughs> sound. There you go. Mm, 
And the honesty didn't mind, you know, stopping off for a drink like Well, frankly, much though I enjoyed my guided tour of the cash and carry, I think as a Friday night's entertainment, it might have lacked a certain little something without a quick drink to round things <laughs> off. It was just that Dee Dee, well, you know, it was her idea, like. Very nice, your wife. Yeah, yeah. Mind you, when you've been married 20 years. You've not been married 20 years. I have. That's amazing. Is she the trouble with Dee Dee? No. She doesn't understand you. Exactly right. That is correct. Hey, listen to me. <laughs> what a classic. <laughs> now, the thing is, you know, she's going one way and I'm going the other. We just want different things and, well, we don't. Hey, come on, what are we doing going on about me all the time? What about you? Me? Well, so far, fingers crossed, I've managed to avoid the marriage trap. Yeah, but you got a boyfriend, haven't you? Mm, not really, no. Come on, Bev, a lovely young girl like you. No, honest. I was seeing this lad from Heighton, a bricky, real bruiser of a fella. Do you know what? He used to work out in the gym every night. The muscles on his thighs were that thick. He had to have his trousers specially made. You're joking. No, honest. I mean, it was quite fanciable and everything for about 10 minutes. But he was completely in love with himself. Do you know, I think he was more interested in his own body than he was in mine. Really? Must have been crackers. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, really, should I? A bit intimate. A glass of wine lose all my inhibitions. <laughs> so, are you, um, still seeing him? No, I binned him off. Well, that's the trouble with younger men. They're all in love with themselves. I prefer a man who's seen a bit of life, knows his way around. No. I much prefer an older man. Trouble is finding one. Best ones are already spoken for. It was supposed to cheer you up. <laughs> it's a comedy. <laughs> it was just the ending. It was dead sentimental. I'm a sucker for all that. <laughs> I'm tired. <sighs> no, not really. So, how are you getting home to Eldon? I'm staying here tonight. Oh. Do you want another cup of coffee? Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, it's a bit of a drag, all this travelling backwards and forwards. I'm thinking of moving back to Liverpool, actually. What, into a flat or something? Oh, no, I can't afford a flat. Something cheap, you know, a room in a shared house or something. I'll uh, have a look on the notice board for you at college if oh, you want. Oh, yeah, brilliant. You're going to be all right on the floor? Fine. Actually, no. <laughs> The floor's quite hard, isn't it? Well, they're well known for it. Yeah, they are. What are you doing? Sitting down. Well, are you comfy now? <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, you sit there and I'll sit here. And I'd appreciate it if your arms or any other wandering parts of your anatomy stayed where they are now. OK? Sorry. Sometimes you'd be fine for weeks. You seem to come in cycles. You could feel it building up to him. Rage. Till the atmosphere in the house got so thick no one could breathe. And then one chance remark, something trivial, and he'd snap. I could never escape it. I could never hide. He always found me. Once he dragged me all the way downstairs by my hair. Because, you see, I was part of it. I was the focus of all that rage. The more he hurt me, the better he felt. More in control. More of a man. Andy, you've got to get out. I'm sick of running. No, I mean out of the marriage. Divorce him. Look, I'm sorry. Will you stop saying that? There's nothing to be sorry for. Look, I do like you, Keith. I mean, I like being with you. It's just a bit soon for me to think about anything like that. I've made a right mess of it, haven't I? <laughs> no, no, I'm flattered. <laughs> I just have got a lot of things to sort out. Hey, I understand. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Thanks for the film. 
I had a really nice night. I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I've done something here. It's jammed. Here, let me. Can you see? Yeah. There you go. Was it that easy? Well, it's a knack. Thank you. What for? Bill. For tonight. Thank you for giving me a job, being so kind to me. You never know how much it means to me. Good night, Ron. Sweet dreams. bottle out on me now. Oh, I've just got a really bad feeling about it. Stop whinging, will you? Look, we've got this far, haven't we? We've got a van. And don't forget while we're doing it, to help Mick out. Yeah, but he's not going to know that, is he? He's just going to think he's been robbed. Well, of course he's going to think he's been robbed. That's the whole point. And the busies will believe him, because he'll be telling the truth, won't he? That'll upset the kids. It'll upset them even more if they get evicted. Look, at least this way he's going to get some insurance money, isn't he? Well, there has to be another way. There isn't. Southport to see if the tide was in. I've been to the toilet. Where the hell do you think I've been? No, oh, don't be like that. You've been settled all night. Are you all right? Yeah, well, probably something I had to eat before I went to bed last night. You didn't have anything to eat. Well, it's probably that then. <laughs> God, Jimmy, look what you've done now. Behave, will you? It makes it look more real, doesn't it? Anyway, it's all on the insurance. Come on, we're in. No. Oh, Jimmy, you're going to have to get somebody else to help you. Well, that's brilliant, that is, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I'll go out onto the main road, shall I? And ask the first passerby if he fancies doing a robbery with me. Come on, Sim, but I need you. No, no, I'm not setting foot in the place. I just keep imagining the kids' faces when they find out. Look, Jimmy, it's their home. I don't care what reason we're doing it for. I just can't do it to them. Simbad, I can't carry all that gear on my own. When you get right down to it, if it's just the chemistry that burns itself out sometimes. What are you talking about? Love. Love. Chemical reaction, dear. Anyway, it's been early in the day for deep thinking, isn't it? Well, you woke me up. I can't get back to sleep. It makes you 
think, though, doesn't it? No. Nope. Doesn't make me think, anyway. Not this hour of the morning. When you think how people fall in love and they can't bear to be parted, and in contact all the time, making sacrifices for each other, and suddenly it fades, sometimes dies. Yeah, but we've been married for 20 years, haven't we? Every couple has their ups and downs, the quiet spells. Just the way it is when you know so much about the other person. I'm not talking about us. I'm going on about Derek and Margaret. They really were in love. Now it just seems to be all over. Yeah, well, like I say, it's just the way it goes, isn't it? Look, I know something. I'll have to tell you about it, Ron. What? I saw Margaret kissing Keith. Oh, well, that's nothing to do with us, is it? No, yeah, in a way. Oh, come on, Dee. They're not related to us, are they, eh? So it's not our problem. And Dad, I did write to her breaking the engagement off. Not in so many words. Oh, come on, he did. He may have sugarcoated it and all that, but the bottom line was that he was packing it in. Don't be so callous as that. You know, she didn't waste any time, did she? I mean, one of our Mike's mates. Yeah, that's the thing that surprises me, actually. It's one of our Mike's mates. Well, yeah, there's that, like, but... Well, why doesn't a girl go out with somebody normal for a change? No. Yeah, you know, someone who's... Someone who's not a priest or... Who's white. Ron Dixon, didn't you ever learn? You're just amazing. Anna, but there's, uh, there's no need for all this. Oh, that's all right. I like to keep myself busy. No, but I'm just feeling a bit bad about what happened. You're complaining about you having your own room and not paying rent and that. No, you're right. Why should you subsidise me? And why should you and Keith have any one room? I just have to find a job and earn some money. Yeah, just suppose we're going on a bit. Just with us paying and that. I don't blame you. But if you and I had swapped rooms, it might be a bit awkward if Keith had to share with me. Why well, reckon he'd be made up? <laughs> but, uh, he does snore a bit after a few lagers, you know. Oh, I can hear. You both do. Well, me as well. <laughs> I'm afraid so. But I'm happy as long as I have a roof over my head and some toast. So there's uh, definitely no nannying jobs going about then? No, I can't find anything. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you might know how you can make some money. He's into everything, you know. Oh, maybe I could carry his bucket. Sinbad, come in, mate. So, if you don't mind putting up with me for a while, I'll do my best to find a paying job. Anything. No, we've got no choice, really, have you? But uh, I promise to keep the snoring down. Good morning. Morning. You're early, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I couldn't really sleep that, you know, so decided to get at it. You know, sooner you start, sooner you finish, don't you? Oh, that's nice. Oh, please, help yourself to toast. Cheers. So, how's things here at the Ritz, then? Just about a four Ritz biscuits. That's a vlogy. Not you mean. I'm feeling the pinch myself. You'd be surprised at how many people have started cleaning their own windows. I don't suppose you know of any jobs going, do you? Well, not me, kid. Your best bet's to get down the job centre. At least you'd have plenty of gumbo. Ah, yes, yes. Well, I was uh, looking for something a bit more casual, you know. I didn't really want to fill in all those official forms. Well, not when they haven't got any jobs anyway. Yeah, well, uh, everyone who's out of work's looking for something on the side, aren't they? Black economy and all that. Anyway, you'll be able to sign on in a couple of months, won't you? Oh, yes, yes. I'm just looking for something, you know, in the meantime. I thought you might know of something. Nah, sorry. But if I do hear of anything, I'll let you know. Anything in particular? Hmm. Well, nannying, but anything, really. So long as she doesn't try to muscle in on me wind around, eh? <laughs> right. I better get off. Yes, I'll come with you. I need to go to the shops. I was just going to get some stuff together. Yeah, sorry, I can't help you straight away, Anna. But as I say, I'll keep my ears open. And uh, by the way, don't you go worrying about claiming your benefits, you know, because there's millions of pounds goes unclaimed every year here. Uh, yes, yes, I'll look into that. I just thought I'd ask you because I'm told that you're the man who knows everything about everything. Well, well, I keep myself to myself, really, if the truth be known. Come on, Ron, don't you want me money or what? 
Don't say that. You give him a heart attack. Uh, uh, oh, uh. what is he like? Just wanted to see if you really cared. Oh, I do, I do. Isn't that sweet, eh? Well, if anything happens to you, I'm out of a job, aren't I? Beverly, I am deeply touched. Tell you what, Frank, she's the best ever work for me. Pleased to hear it, mate. Go on. Go on, mate. Well, I know you. First the praise, then the put-down line. Go on, get it over with. No, I mean it. You all right there, love? Can you manage? Oh, fine. Well, she's doing all right, is she? Francis, she is bang on. She is the best. I made up for you, Ron. And Evelyn seems to be getting on better as well. Yeah, Bev was saying. No family secrets, like, you know, she just said all was well. What about you and Lynn? See, they're still living with you. Is it still a trial period or what? Not officially, like, you know, we just thought we'd carry on, see how it goes, like. Yeah. Well, anyway, glad it's working out for you, mate. Good on you. Yeah, so am I, mate. I feel like a teenager again. <laughs> Can't beat it on, I'm telling you. So, listen, uh, how are things with you and Dee these days? Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, love. Uh, can I help you out? Do you sell birthday candles? I most certainly do, somewhere. <laughs> ah, yeah, there they are. Right. There you go. One of the kids' birthdays, is it? No, oh, Rachel. She's 14 today. Ah. Well, in that case, I'm glad I asked, because there's only ten in a packet, so you will need the other one. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, now that's something you don't get in the supermarket, is it, eh? Personal attention from the proprietor. Ron, you're the leaseholder, not the proprietor. The elusive Mr. Grant. Now, where have you been hiding yourself these days? Well, I've had a nice little break, haven't I? In Mallorca, my little place in uh, Elitis. Mm. Very thanks to uh, Max Fan. Now I'd like some decent shampoo on if you got some. Well, I'm sure if Sir would like to take a wander down the right hand side of these leasehold premises, he'll find something to his liking. Um. So, with all this praise, then you'll no doubt be looking towards promotion, then, eh? I think promotion could be just a bit limited. Hang on, hang on. Aren't you getting from the bed too, like? The Moby. Oh, I, yeah. Hey, come the summer, bed, I can just see you commanding your own shop, you know, on the open road. You want me driving that big thing? Yeah, you'll be able to handle that. No problem, won't you, Frank? <laughs> Not that. Tell you what, I'll show you after, eh? Meanwhile, there's another satisfied customer. Hold on. Not satisfied. You've got no decent shampoo, have you? Oh, I do apologise about that, Mr Grant. I'll rectify that as soon as possible. By the way, did you ever seen that posh bit of stuff you used to knock around with? You know the one that works with Pat Farnham? Who do you mean, Callum Clark? No, she's, uh, she's down in London. She's just been for a while. Oh, really? Well, I could have sworn that was her just about to come into the shop till she saw you and changed her mind. Hmm. Hi. What's up with it? Oh, nothing, love. It's just that sometimes the worm doesn't always get the early bird. What? Never you mind. You just keep on looking beautiful and making me money. Ah, oh, well, as long as somebody's making a few bob, eh? See ya. Bye, Frank. Yeah, till now, Frank. Give Lynn my love. Hi, Anna. Hi. OK. Yes, thanks. So, um, are you really serious, then, about showing me this Moby? Yeah. If you really fancy having a go, innit? I'll have a go at anything once. I've just bought Rachel's birthday present. It isn't very much, but I've done the best with what I've got. She's at school. I know. It'll be a nice surprise for her when she gets home. No, I don't want to come in. I'll let her know who it's from. Thanks. Well, don't look so worried, Mandy. I've agreed to stay away, and I will. It's just that... Well, with it being the first birthday in a while that I can see her on, I... Thanks. You didn't mind my dropping it by, did you? No. Should be pleased that you did. I'll tell you what. Supposing I call back later when she's home from school, but not to come in, just to see her for one minute, out here. Well, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? 
Yes. Great. I'll see you later, then. Bye. Bye. What do you think of it then, eh? It's great, isn't it? You know, it's clean and everything, but can't wait to get my hands on it. What's up? Oh, nothing. I'm just, uh, I'm just pleased that you're that keen. Oh, I'm going for anything. You don't try it, you don't know whether you like it or not. Well, we'll have to try and do something about that then. Why not? When? Well, no time like the present. Suits me. You got anything to use? What do you mean, anything to use? A brush. You know, dustbin and brush, cleaning materials. Oh, yeah. Up on the top shelf there. Right. Give me a hand up, I'll get started. Yeah, sure. Hi, hi, Ronnie. Jimmy, you're fighting a life out of me there. You look miles away there, kid. More like years, my son. More like years. <laughs> How you doing? Oh. Listen, uh, you haven't seen Simbad this morning, have you? No, but I see your boss is back, bragging about his gaff in Mallorca, poser. All oh, right. Been away in Spain, has he? Well, listen, if he turns up, will you tell him I'll be in the club? And Simbad, if you see him. Anyway, catch you later. All right, see you, Jim. Right, love, I'll leave you two for half an hour then, eh? Keep an eye on the shop, will you? Are you nipping off home? Yeah, yeah, I'll get a bite to eat. See you soon. Yeah, bye. Well, I couldn't very well leave you out, could I? I mean, after all, you did have a small part to play in her birthday 14 years ago. No, no, Trevor, I don't want anything from you. Yeah, I don't blame you. They are a bit pathetic, aren't they? I'm sorry, it's all I can afford at the moment. That doesn't matter. I just don't want anything from you, Trevor. You shouldn't even be here. But you said I could wish our Rachel a happy birthday. You knew I was coming back. She isn't in yet. Well, she won't be long, will she? All right. I'll wait here. All right, you can wait inside, as long as you promise not to stay longer than five minutes after Rachel comes home. I promise. Oh, Mandy, it's lovely. Oh, I should be delighted. I really miss you and the girls so much, you know. Don't. I'm sorry, it's just instinctive. Do you mind if I... Hello? Up here! What are you doing back in the afternoon? Well, I just thought I'd nip round and see you. Why? Well... Much time for each other recently, haven't we? So I thought, well, maybe we could spend some time together alone. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, we'll leave that, eh? Come into the bedroom. Ron Dixon, I don't know what's come over you. In the middle of the day as well. Not complaining, are you? No, just curious. Last night you weren't the least bit interested. Yeah, well, last night was last night. Now is now. Oh, no, not straight away. There's something I want to show you. Yeah, there's something I want to show you, I know. Babe. So, what do you think? I got it this morning. I thought it might give us a kick start. Very nice. But you won't be needing that. <laughs> Just get into bed. As you are. Dad, I was hoping I'd see you. 
Happy birthday, Rachel. <laughs> I've got you something small. It isn't very much now, so don't get excited. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Hello, love. Like I said, it isn't very much, but hopefully by next birthday, I'll be on my feet and able to afford a decent present. This is great. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> There's some chocolates there as well. I tell you the truth, they were for Mum, but I don't think she likes them. It isn't that. They're my favourites. How did you know? Well, you are my daughter. And there's my big daughter. Hello, Beth. How are you? What the hell is he doing here? This was supposed to be our safe house. Safe from him. Beth, you are safe from me. How could you? How could you let him back in? Well, your dad has to go now. Because of her? That's not fair, Mum. It's my birthday. Don't get upset, Rachel. It's okay. I'll go. You have a lovely tea. No! I want you to stay, Dad. Get him out of here. And make sure he knows never to come back. Because if he does, I'm gonna go to the police. Don't be so horrible, you! I'm on my way. I mean it. I'll have him back in prison if he ever, ever bothers us again. Bye. Hiya. It's Beth in, please. Who are you? I'm a friend of his. Who are you? Her father. And I don't like you hanging around here, right? Well, I live next to her. She doesn't want to see you. OK, all right. Trevor. I think we both know it isn't a good idea you coming around here again, don't we? But you're my family. No, we were your family and you destroyed us. It's over, Trevor. No, 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 I've changed. You know, being in prison has changed me. Look, all I thought about every day was you and Beth and Rachel. I love you all. And I think that still, deep down, you love me. Well, it's true, isn't it, Mandy? No. I did love you once, and you knocked it out of me. I think it's best all round if we make a clean break of it and get divorced. It has to be done for all our sakes. But I love you. Tell me what. We'll have to do this a bit more often. A little bit of afternoon delight. <laughs> yeah. All that was lacking were three little words. Ah. <laughs> it was great. Right, go. Better go. There's money to be made. I want a yoke with you, Jim. You're going to tell me you're working it too hard again in a minute. Listen, I didn't get much sleep last night, and I had a bit of an early start this morning. And that Joelle saw one. She's been working me to death since you've been away. Jimmy, do this. Jimmy, do that. I'm sick of it. I haven't had a minute. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. We're finally getting our money's worth out of you, Jim. Oh, no sweat on that score. Anyway, listen. I think the least you could do is to let me know when you're going to be doing the off and when you're back again. Spain was in... Well, look, it's just one of my little perks now, isn't oh, it? It's all right for some, isn't it, eh? Nice little apartment in Spain, all that. Yes, yeah, Cietas in Mallorca. Hey, I'll tell you what, Jim, mate. If you've got some spare time, right? Hey, yeah, nice one. Well, Great. If you've got some spare time, we'll show some photos of the place. It's really lovely. Oh, you're nice, aren't you? Thanks. Uh, look, I've uh, got to get off. There's an old friend of mine I've got to see. Yeah, well, listen, if you see Sinbad, tell him I'm looking for him, all right? Yeah, all right, John. Hello, stranger. Hello, Barry. How are you? Not too bad. A bit surprised. I thought you'd have been in touch by now. <laughs> I had some business to attend to in London, and now it's finished, I'm back. I didn't think you'd be that concerned. Well, I know we weren't exactly an item, but, I, well, I just thought you'd have let me know, you know, how we stood, like... I mean, we didn't have an argument or anything, did we? Oh, no, but I thought you, of all people, would understand. I take my work seriously, and I needed to try and set up some clients in London for Patricia and me. Well, I've been busy. I'm sure you've been busy with your club. Yeah, I know all that, but uh, I thought we had something going on, you know. Uh, I mean, we had a laugh, didn't we? Yeah, it was a laugh, but it wasn't top priority. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go. Look, well, Karen. Do you mind? Look, I've tried to let you down lightly. It was good while it lasted, but it was never going to be serious, was it? 
Well, I thought you knew we were just using each other for a while. I mean, we're hardly well suited, are we? Just don't like being seen for a ride, that's all. No one's taking you for a ride, Barry. You just don't seem to like being the one that's being dropped, that's all. Is that it? Bye, Barry. I'm sorry, do you think you could come back when Peter's here? I haven't got a penny, I really haven't. Uh, yeah, don't worry, uh, I'll see the man in the suit later. How's the job hunting going? No, nothing. Don't suppose you've heard of anything yet? No, I think no. But if I do, I'll let you know. Thanks. See ya. Bye. See you later, Dad. Good morning, Pat. Oh, Sinbad, I haven't got any change and I'm late. Oh, you said good morning. I presumed you wanted to pay for cleaning the windows. Well, as a matter of fact, I do, actually. I haven't got time to mess about. Call later. Right, it's only to bite me head off. I'm trying to be courteous to the customer. You're supposed to know all about public relations, aren't you? Are you sure you're fit to be left? Mom, don't worry. I'm just a bit off that dog. I might get into school later. Well, I phoned them and they said not to worry. All right then, love. You take care. I'll see you later. Bye, Mom. Ask me to keep an eye on the place and the doors open. You'd better check inside. <laughs> oh no. Poor kids. Poor Nick. Can you get in touch with him? No, I didn't leave a number. You'll have to tell the police. Well, I suppose so. Look, I really should be in the office, but I'll be there all day if you need any help. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Pat. Well, I'll leave you to it. All right, see ya. Bye. today. I'm all on my own. Why don't you come round and cheer me up? Come on, chop, chop. You can pass them faster than that, can't you? I'm doing my best. Yeah, well, you'll have to do better, won't you? There's a whole nation out there and he's providing for. I'm doing a very good job of keeping away. Beverly, always be prepared. And keep those bottles coming quickly, will you? Hey, I'm out of breath. You're going to have to get fit, you know, if you want to further your career in retailing. 
Right, that's it. You're pretty fit for an old man. Gee, gold. Well, compared to me, you know, I am only 21. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you think I am? Oh, what would I like saying? Come on, forget that I'm your boss, your living, your bread and butter, your life. 35? Yeah, well, while I like a crawler, let's be a bit realistic, eh? 42? Am I right? Yeah, well, close enough. Not quite, but I'll settle for 42. And may I add that I am hardly used and I've only ever had one careful under. Hardly used, eh? Plenty of life in you, then. Indeed. I'm looking forward to me prime and me cup of tea. Now, whose turn is it yours or mine? Yeah, I'd better sit down and get me breath back. You better do it, being so fit as you are. Right. Fair enough. Is DD the same age as you? No. The young DD is just a little younger than me. Uh, go for younger women, then, eh? I don't really think age has got anything to do with it, do you? I think it all depends if you like each other. I think you're right. We get on, don't we? Yeah. I think we could get on very well. I've had worse bosses, I suppose. You scumbag. Oh, how to win friends and influence people, eh? That's nice, isn't it? Why didn't you try going out and coming back in with a cheery good morning, James? You even broke the toys. What are you talking about? Sinbad. What's going on? Mixed kids have been through a lot. Now they've got to come home to a bagled house, a bagled home. Tell you what, when you do a job, you do it good style, don't you? Hang on, hang on. Are you telling me there's been a real robbery? You know there's been a robbery because you did it. I haven't robbed anybody. Are you saying that Mix has really been broken into? Yeah. Well, what did they take? The telly, the video, the radio, the sofa, God knows what else. Oh, that's terrible. Hang on, are you really trying to tell me that you had nothing to do with it? I saw you break the window, remember? Come on. There's a big difference between breaking a window, trying to do a favour for a mate and really robbing him. Some scallies probably saw that the house was empty and did it. Heck. Well, have you found the busies yet, or what? No, well, I was just about to. Well, the sooner the better, eh? I you to think that I was wasting my time in London. Of course I didn't think that. I mean, let's face it, there's a recession on and we're a small PR company in the north of England. Well, that really is the basic problem. I mean, any work that is going is going to be swept up by the London people. I'm not surprised how quickly my contacts run dry. Look, maybe we should consider moving down there. You know, relocate to London. It'd be impossible for me at the moment. Max's job, for a start. Well, there is one oh, thing... Hang on a sec. Simbad! What did the police say? Well, they're sending somebody round this afternoon. I'm just going back to wait for them. Oh, well, listen, I've got to go into town for a couple of hours, but then I'll be back in the office if they want to see me. No, well, I shouldn't think they will. Actually, they were very casual about it. Well, you know where I'll be anyway. Oh, yeah. oh, Paul Mick is in for a shock. When did you back? Monday, I think. Karen, I'm going to nip in the shop to get some mints. Right, I'll, I'll wait in the car. OK. Oh, well, best get round there and wait for the busies. Cheer up. Wasn't your fault? Yeah. I feel terrible about it, though. You know, he would give me the keys, wouldn't he? I was supposed to be looking after the place. It's not your fault. No one's safe these days. I think it might be best if we told everyone, though. Do you think so? Yeah, well, don't burglars usually go in spades, twos or threes? I think we all need to be on our guard. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Well, I'll see you. All right. See you, Trish. Yeah. Here you go. See you, Bert. Here you go, my love. Ah, the lovely Mrs. Farnham. How are you this bright and cheerful morning? The bearer of bad news, I'm afraid. Mick Johnson's been burgled. Oh, no. That's the last thing he needs, the poor beggar. When did this happen? Well, last night, I suppose. I was with Sinbad this morning when he found the front door open. Have they taken much? Oh, the place looked bare and there were toys broken and... Uh, oh, well. Could I have some soft mints? Yes, sir. How about the police? What have they said? They've not been around yet. Sinbad's waiting for them now. Well, we're all have to be careful now, you know, because robbery's rarely happening once. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, I'd better be going. Bye-bye. Bye. See you, Trish. Hi, Pete. Hi, yeah. Oh, bless the back of this. Did you hear about Mick Johnson? No, what? Got robbed last night. They've wrecked the place and made off with all the kids. Oh, no. You best be on your guard, I'm telling you, because chances are to be back. Yeah, you're probably right. Poor old Mick. He's away, isn't he? Yeah. Doesn't know about it yet. Shock to come home to. Yeah, terrible. 
Mind you, your house is really empty these days, is it? Now you've opened Hotel Harrison. Yeah, that's true. I better get into what's happened. I'll see you later. Cheers. Yeah, all right. Bye. Sit down. Never know the minute, do you? He's a bit of a honk, isn't he? I've got a lovely bomb. You know, I don't believe I'm hearing this. One of our neighbours has just been robbed blind, and all you can say is he's a bit of a hunk. Life must go on, Rob. Beverly, when you're serving people, is that what you're thinking? He's a bit of all right. Yeah. Well, women can think about sex as well, you know, Ron. It's not just exclusive to men. I'm shocked. I see you looking at women when they come in this shop. And I bet I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm wondering how much they're going to be spending. Oh, yeah, and the rest. Anyway, I think you've got a nice bum as well. Beverly? Mum doesn't want me here, you know. It's gonna be all right. You and Mum just need to talk. And you can't talk if you're not together. Are you sure, Rachel? Of course I'm sure. It's gonna be all right. I haven't been me and you for ages. You haven't even seen my room. It's brill. Oh, just come in, Dad. about the break-in. It's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, I feel awful about it. Why do you feel responsible? I mean, you can't watch the house 24 hours a day. Fancy picking on poor Mick of all people. Yeah. Look, is there anything I can do? I've got plenty of time on my hands. No, no, you're all right. I'm just gonna finish off tidying up here a bit and then I'll go and have a look at that window. It's in the hands of the police, really. Yeah. Is there any idea who did it? Yeah, well, could they? No, I suppose not. Maybe it's someone who knows Mick and you'd be away for the week. No, no, no. Anyone that knew Mick wouldn't rob him. No, I suppose you're right. You know, I thought we stood a real chance of getting that account. Yeah. So did I. We're all coming down to a question of survival, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure it's that drastic yet. No, but it's close, and we have to be realistic. I mean, is our company capable of giving us both a living? Are we going to ride this recession? I don't know. Look, it's a situation we have to address. Oh, we're just going through a lean spell. There's no point panicking and getting as depressed as the market. I just wish I could get in touch with Mick. Break it to him gently, you know. Mm. Then at least he could prepare the children. Is Jammer and what sort of the boys name? Leo. Leo. Do you have any brothers and sisters at home? No, I'm an only child. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? You from so far away and me from just round the corner. Yeah, we still got something in common. We'll have to look after ourselves, haven't we? Mm. Which is more difficult than I could have ever imagined. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of being broke all the time. Yeah, I know how you feel. Oh, you may not be quite as broke as you think you are. I told Peter he owes you the window cleaning money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll change my life, won't it? Right, well, uh, I'll see you later then, Anna. Mm. Bye, Simba. See ya. What are you doing on Friday evening? Hmm? <coughs> well, I've no particular plans at the moment. Good. Round table are having a party for Max as the outgoing chairman. Why don't you come along with Barry? Barry Grant? Yeah. <laughs> well, can I come alone or with someone I choose? Well, yes, of course you can. Aren't you going out with him anymore? Going out? It's a bit archaic for you, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Well, have you fallen out? Or... Oh, I'm like close to falling out. Barry was the subject of our bet. Simple as that. Well, he always said he wasn't my usual type. But you enjoyed his company. It's all right, he's hardly the most sophisticated person in the world. Aaron, that's not very nice. No, but it's true. There's only a bit of 
rough after all, haven't you? Don't you ever go for that type? I'm a married woman. That doesn't stop me thinking about it, though, does it? I mean, the uh, washer repair man, the bin man, the uh, window cleaner. Yeah, I can just see me in Sinbad. <laughs> Sinbad? How did it go with the police? Let's take it very much for granted. There's so much of it about, you know. Mm. Yeah, well, at least he'd be able to claim off his insurance. Yeah, well, that's some consolation. He'll have a battle on his hands to get paid out. Believe me. Insurance companies are nice to pay out these days because so many people are fiddling them. Terrible, isn't it? Anyway, let's hope he gets what's due to him. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. See ya. If it was you, if we get all that stuff back in the bungalow, we'll have to think of some way of explaining it all. Let's just leave it to the police, eh? Hmm? It wasn't me. And anyway, have you thought for one second that, that I could have just walked away after you left and somebody else found the window open? Well, that would be a hell of a coincidence, wouldn't it? Well, it happens, doesn't it? An unoccupied house. People find out. And what about the furniture, anyway, eh? Did I carry it away on me back, or what? Oh, thanks. Writing home? Mm, yes, to my parents. I like to give them the impression that this is the land of milk and honey and all is well. Do they really believe that? Mm, probably not. Do they know you're out of work? No. I don't want them to know that I'm relying on charity to keep me going. If, um, if things don't improve soon, would you consider going back to Poland? No. This is my country now. It might seem silly, I suppose, but it's a matter of pride. My parents and other relatives saved up to allow me to come over here. And if I fail, I feel I'm letting them all down. Yeah, I know how you feel. My parents paid for me to go to Oxford and all that. But you've got to face reality. My father is very well respected locally. He's a proud man. People think I'm over here studying and doing really well. He's probably exaggerated, as he does. So if I go back home, I've got an awful lot to live up to. Besides, I happen to like living in this country. But if you can't find a job, it's not your fault. Millions of people are out of work. Yeah. And they're not here illegally. Well, if you don't mind staying on as an unpaid housekeeper, we can keep you for the foreseeable future. Or until the place is sold, at least. Thank you. You've all been very understanding. Oh, I could do with a win on the football pools, only I can't afford to send them in. I'll find a rich husband, then. Oh, any husband would do. Well, at least any English husband. Then I'd be able to stay here legally and get a job. If only it were that simple. Mm, but nothing ever is, is it? Still, if you happen to think of an eligible young man, I'd be very grateful. <laughs> You've got a house full here. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah. I suppose you want some money then. Should work out about 20 pence a piece, the amount of people living in this gaff. There's only four, and only one working full time. Oh, there you go. Any bad news about Mick getting done, isn't it? Yeah. I believe the kids' doors were smashed up and the place completely stripped. Well, I don't think it was quite that bad. I'm just on my way over there now to fix the window and make sure everything's secure. See ya. Bye. Hey, it just makes you wonder what sort of people are out there, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's what I heard anyway. They've taken everything apart from the wallpaper. God, I don't know. Well, if the busy's got no idea who could have done it, then. Have they ever? Hey, could be anybody, couldn't it? But I tell you what, though, we'll all have to be careful from now on because it never happens in ones. Tell me about it. Hey, listen. You'll have to sleep with your pairs under your pillow now, won't you? Hey, <laughs> with my log, I'll probably wake up and find a load of teeth left there for you. Ah, yeah. Listen, I'm off. I'll see yeah, you. Yeah, Jim. Hey, yeah, what about him, then? What about him? Well, is he a honk or what? Oh, you must be joking. Don't like him. Why not? Something sneaky about him. No, Jimmy's all right in small doses, I'm telling you. When you've been here a while, you learn how to judge people, and he's a rough diamond. What about this Moby, then? I can handle it, you know. <laughs> no doubt about that. Ah, but I won't know till I try, will I? Go on, give us a go, Harry. All right, then when? No time like the present. Hello, 
Rachel, where's Rachel? She's with me up here in her room. Rachel! Hi, Mum. I've just been showing Dad around. You love my room, don't you, Dad? The house is really lovely, Mandy. You've all worked hard, I can see that. You seem to have made a quick recovery, Rachel. Yeah, well, I wasn't well at all, I think. I think it was the accident on my birthday that made me feel ill. Seeing Dad today has helped, though. I hope you don't mind my being here. I phoned to see if Rachel liked her birthday present, and she asked me to call. And what with her being unwell and on her own... I had to do some shopping. Oh, no, no, I'm not criticising you. It's just, well, sooner or later, you and I are going to have to have talks. Not now, though. No, no, not now. But maybe we can have talks about talks. I've told Dad we saved him some birthday cake. You can have it now in a cup of tea. Oh, that'd be great, Rachel. If your mom doesn't mind. All right, but I don't want Beth upset again. I don't want anyone upset, ever again. I'll be long gone before she's home. I'll be down in a minute. All right, love. I'm sorry about the other day, getting so upset. It's just the word divorce, I suppose. Trevor, you were jailed for violence against... And it's the best thing that could have happened to me, to be punished and cured. Asking you for a divorce couldn't have come as such a shock. Just that I thought you realised that I'm over all that unpleasantness now. There was more than unpleasantness, Trevor. You know that. And you don't know how sorry I am about it all. Andy, I'd give anything just to be able to hug you now. No, Trevor. I knew where you were for weeks before I came here, you know. I just wanted to know myself that it was going to be all right. I really have changed, you know. Honestly. And I would never lay a finger on you again. I'm now the old Trevor Jordash that you first fell in love with. I'll get us some tea and cake, shall I? <sighs> Thanks, Rach. It certainly is. You slide over there and I'll walk around. Right. You all right? Yep, I've just started off. Yeah, hang on, hang on. I've got to go through the controls and the gears first. I can drive, you know. Yes, I know you can, but just let me show you through the gears. All right, they're very temperamental. Right, just put your hand there. I wish I had a pound for every bloke that said that to me. Beverly, are you going to take this seriously? Yes, boss. Well, put your hand on the gear stick. Foot on the clutch pedal, press down. Can you reach? Yep. Right, there we go. You ready? Yep. First. Second. Third. Fourth. And... Got it? Yeah, I'm a fast learner. Do you want me to go through it again? If you want. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, ready? First, second, third, fourth, and reverse. Okay? Great. I'll look at the end. What was that for? Treating me like a tar. Beverly! Beverly, come back! Beverly! 